Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this session. Uh, my name is El Mundo Mejia, and today I'm very excited about being here. I want to say thanks to the Dynamics Conf community for giving me this opportunity. And today we're going to talk about building extensible controls in the 365 FO. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is, again, El Mundo Mejia. I'm a technical architect and manager at RSM USSB with more than eight years of experience in Microsoft Dynamics AX. My main focus are X++ development, integration development, mostly with SOAP and JSON custom services, along with Power Automate, Logic Apps, and other tools. Besides that, I have experience on retail and POS development, and also I work on Business Central with the AL development. I also consider myself an enthusiast about new technologies, and I have experience about artificial intelligence, cognitive services, Internet of Things, and mixed reality and also some experience uh, developing applications, mostly for Android. So going back on track, we're gonna, back, uh, we're gonna talk about today about extensible controls. So what are extensible controls? Extensible controls are application controls that you can create using the same tool Microsoft does. Uh, there are three main components that we need to be aware when creating extensible controls. The first one is the X++ build class. This one allows the developer to define properties on the properties sheet in Visual Studio, meaning in design. So we can see them on the right side of the screen in Visual Studio, and I'll show you where they are. The second one is the X++ Runtime class. This allows the developer to define all the data patterns and server-side business logic that once it's serialized in the JavaScript view model, allow us to consume all these properties and commands by the HTML and JavaScript parts of the control. So this is very important. And last but not least, we have the HTML and JavaScript. These two define the control visualization and client-side orientation patterns that, along with jQuery and the Microsoft Dynamics HTML binding syntax, allow us to create a powerful tool uh, which contains a main channel of communication back and forth between the server and the client. So what are we going to do in this demo? What we're going to do in this demo is to create a new extensible control that will allow us to load an image in d FO and being able to select a portion of it. Then we're going to crop it and we're going to save it as an attachment uh, for an existing customer in d FO. I just want to say that I will assume that in this demo we do have some basic knowledge on, of X++. So there are some portions that, are, that I already built in this, in this demo, so we can save some time. Things like uh, creating a new form that will contain our extensible control. Also um, creating a form extension so we can put a new button that we'll call our new extensible control form. And some classes that I built so we can perform some further operations in Beatrix to FO. Also remember that we have a chat section, so um, there's gonna be a, a, a live uh, Q&A section, so please make sure to put all your questions there, and I will resolve them as soon as this demo finishes. So let's go back to the, to the environment, let me just switch to it. So you can see right here, I have already a project with some uh, minor objects that I created. Basically what I have here is my new form, which will contain our extensible control, I have a form extension where I have a new button that calls this form, and I have uh, a couple classes right here. This class, for example, uh, image data contract, will allow me to serialize some information that I want to pass from the server to the client, to the JavaScript class in this case, so we can do some further processing. And then we have proper control operations, which is just a generic S++ class that I will use uh, to perform some operations when the information comes back from the JavaScript class into the server. So what, are, what is the first step for us to create an extensible control? First of all, we need to create two, three resource files. Uh, resource files are going to be created by right-clicking here and select new item. And the resource files are going to be pretty much the CSS file, the HTML file, and the JavaScript class that we need for the extensible control. So we go to label and resources, and we're, and we're going to create a new resource right here. And we're going to name it cropper control htm. So cropper control htm is going to be our HTML file. 
I already have a file right here so I can reuse it. It has very minimum code that I will show and explain later in a bit. So we're just gonna select it right now in the meantime. I'm gonna make a right click and I'm gonna create my second resource right here. And this one, I'm gonna name it Cropper Control uh, JS. This is gonna be our JavaScript class. So we're gonna select it from here. And the third step is gonna be, again, creating a resource. And this is gonna be name Cropper Control CSS. And of course, this is gonna be the CSS file. So let's take a quick look at each of the files that I already have created so we can understand what they are doing. The CSS file here, uh, it's basically just um, a regular CSS file with some styling that I want to apply to a button uh, which uses the ID save button. We're gonna take a look at this button later. We haven't created it yet. We just have the styling for it, okay? The HTML file contains um, a little bit more logic. Uh, first of all, it's loading the JavaScript class that we just added here as a resource and it looks for it in the web root directory or the resource bundle path as we normally know it which is normally resources forward slash script now we are loading uh, an open source javascript library that we are using only for this demo this is pretty much the canvas that will allow us to crop the image so we're loading the javascript and we're loading the css file for it and then we're also loading our own CSS file, the one that I just showed previously here. And then we have something very important right here. Uh, this one, the one that I am highlighting, is the main HTML element where all the extensible control uh, logic is going to be loaded into the HTML. So it's, it's normally a deep file, a deep element, and the ID is pretty important. So remember the ID that we put in here, it's proper control. And we also have some default properties that are basically using the Microsoft Dynamics HTML binding syntax, such as the height, the width, and whether the control is going to be visible or not. These are the properties that we can see on the properties sheet in Visual Studio. And we can get access to them very easy just by typing dollar sign $data. So this is pretty handy, and, and this is pretty useful, actually. And the last thing is just an image that I define here that is going to be show up every time that we haven't loaded any custom image, okay? The last thing is the JavaScript file. Um, so when it's loaded, you're gonna see that we have some uh, defined con uh, logic in there. Uh, what you can see here is that this is basically the standard pattern to define a constructor for the extended JavaScript view model. Basically, what this is doing is just applying the base control class behaviors and also combining the default properties and commands along with the new properties and commands that we are going to define in a bit in the runtime class. This piece of code right here is not going to change, so you can just go safely to the Microsoft documentation, do a copy and paste in here, and with this information, uh, you don't need to do anything else in the meantime in the JavaScript class, all right? So the next thing we need to do is actually to create the build class and the runtime class. So we're going to create a new class right here, making a right-click code, and we're going to name it Cropper Control Build. Okay, so this is going to be our build class right here, and then we're going to create another one, which um, it's going to be our runtime class. And this one is going to be named just Cropper Control. Okay, so we've got two classes right here. We're going to start with the build class. The build class always extends off form um, container, actually, form build container control, okay? And then it needs an special decorator. The decorator that we're going to use is going to be form design control attribute. And form design control attribute requires for, for one parameter, which is how the uh, extensible control is going to be, uh, you know, visualized. In the, in the designer of Visual Studio. So in this case, we're going to name it Cropper Control so we can uh, see it easily when we are adding the control in the form. And I want to do something else. In this case, what I want to do is that I want to set um, a property in the property sheet on the right side of the screen here. And I want for that property to be the name of the button that I want to show in the extensible control. So what I do is normally to create um, a basic parent method that I'm going to call parent button name right here. 
Uh, we're going to use the value that we hit, that we created. Well, this is a new parameter actually. So bottleneck is going to be equals to our parameter that we already defined. And then again, what we're doing here is just a regular R method that you guys might know if you already uh, worked previously on X++. And we're just returning the same definition. What makes this different is the decorator that we're going to put at the top. So this part method needs uh, a specific decorator that is uh, called form, form design property attribute. And what, what this is going to ask for is with the name of the property, how we're going to see it on the property sheet in Visual Studio. So I want, I want to name it something easy to remember. So we're going to name it bottom name. At this point, this, this property is going to be only in the server. But I want to move it to the JavaScript class so I can put that as the name of the button uh, in the HTML object. So we're going to that in a bit. What we need to do is go into the runtime class and we're gonna we're gonna extend the runtime class first from form template container control. And then we're gonna specify a decorator which is a form control attribute. And form control attribute is going to require for three parameters. The first parameter is actually the template ID. And this is pretty important because the template ID is the name of the HTML file. It's also the name of the JavaScript class. And it's also the ID of the main, of the main HTML object. So remember, we use proper control for all those things. That's what we need to put in here. Otherwise, you might get some errors when you load them into the browser. The second parameter is the resource bundle path, which is basically where the client framework is going to look for these files in the system. So we're going to use forward slash resources, HTML, uh, cropper control. This is basically the, um, the web group directory here. And the last parameter is the name of the build class, which is um, cropper control build, the one that we created earlier. So we're just going to put it here. OK. We're good with the decorator. But now what we need to do is going back to the designer. And then we're going to override a couple of methods right here. We're going to override the new method. And we are going to override also the apply build method. OK. So what we're going to do here first in the new method is that we're going to define, we're going to define again the resource bundle name. Um, it might be a little bit um, repetitive, but believe me, if you don't do this twice in the decorator and here, you might get a runtime error. So we, we want to avoid errors. So the good thing is that this is basically the same resource bundle path that we define in the decorator. Okay, we got it right. Now, remember that I want to move properties from the property sheet in Visual Studio to the server. So for this, uh, what I need to do is to rely on some um, objects named form property. Uh, what is a form property? Basically, form properties are X++ derived types um, that are basically synchronizing the values between JavaScript and X++. And these are the backend fields used by the properties. So what is a property? A property is a is a basic X++ method that with the right decorator acts as a getter and setter in the JavaScript class. So basically, when we define a property, JavaScript can access to it and get the values from it and also set values to it. So how do we define a form property? We just basically create a private method right here. It's going to be a string in this case, and we're going to name it uh, parm button name. Uh, it's going to be a string value. And this is going to be equals to the form property that we define at the top, remember? So we're going to get the value of it. And then we're going to set it as well. Remember that any question that you may have, you can put it on the chat, and I'll make sure to answer them after this demo. Um, then we're defining the value, and we are returning the same thing. OK value. All right, what do we need for this to be actually a form property? We need a decorator. And the decorator is form property 
attribute. And form property attribute is going to ask us for two things. First of all, uh, it asks us for what kind of property we are using. Is this form property linked to a value or to a data source? For our example, we're going to link it to an actual value. So we don't, we, we're not using a data source in this case. So we just need to define form property kind value. And the second parameter is how this method is going to be recognized in the JavaScript client, in the client. So we're just going to name it something uh, very easy to remember. Uh, I just want to name it button name. OK? So this is the public name of it. OK, so one more thing that I need to do in here, um, I will define the value that comes from the property sheet to my property. So JavaScript can take that value. So for this, what I want to do is to define an instance of proper control build. We just call the build method from the runtime class. And then we just call our parm method right here, parm button main. And this is going to be equals to core build parm button main. So this one is the one that shows up in Visual Studio. And this one is the one that JavaScript is going to consume. All right, so we got this thing done. Something else that I want to do here is that I need to find a way for me to move the new image that I'm going to load in my extensible control along with its properties, like the content type, the file name, and also the customer's rec ID that I want to link this attachment to. I need to find a way for um, JavaScript to recognize when I load that image and react to it. So I want to create another form property to move all that information. I'm just going to do a copy paste so I can save some time. But this one is going to be named send image data to JavaScript because that's basically what it's doing. Um, I, need a, I need another form property right here. And this one is going to be called um, image string property, all right? And image string property, we're just going to do the same thing that we did previously for the other form property. And our public name here is going to be send image data to JavaScript, OK? So before we're done with this, we need to go back to the new method. And we want to register our form properties to the actual property method that we just created. So we're going to use the method of add property. And add property is going to ask us for the name of the method that we're going to link these to. So we're going to use proper control. And the method is going to be parm bottom name. And it's actually handling string values. All right. So we're just going to copy and paste this for the other one. Image property is going to be equals to this new form property that we have here. OK. And we're also using string values. So what's going to happen here is that uh, we got this other method that we're going to use from the server, we're going to call it. Uh, we're going to put the information of the new image here so the JavaScript class can take it and load it into the JavaScript library so we can crop it. But there is one catch here. Uh, we just define form properties as private because um, whenever these are serialized into the JavaScript model, they are publicly ex uh, exposed to the, to, you know, to the public. Um, so we need to be very careful about exploits. But if this is private, I cannot access to it from the server. So what we're going to do, and this is actually recommended by Microsoft, we're going to define a poly version of this that we're going to call send image data to control class. It's going to receive a string value. And this is just going to call our property. But by doing this, we're just making sure that we're not putting uh, any properties as public because otherwise there's a risk for any exploit. OK, so uh, be careful about that. So this method is going to be called by the server. It's going to set the value of the image. Then uh, it's going to put this information into our property. The property is going to receive it. And then JavaScript needs to react to whenever that value change. How is this going to happen, you may ask? So that's a very good question. But before um, doing that and show you how, how that works, we need to do a small build here so we can, so we can see our extensible control in the designer. Um, hopefully, the, the extensible control is going to be loaded pretty quick. Sometimes the build is quite slow. Remember, there, there's cache involved. So in the meantime, we can do some small recap. Um, 
What we have done so far, we have created three resource files right here, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. And then we have created our runtime class and our build class. In the build class, we define a property that is uh, public here. And in the runtime class, we define two properties that JavaScript can get access to. So the build is done. Let me go back to the form, to the new form. And if I make a right click here, and every, if everything works fine, I should be able to look at my new extensible control. Let's go to new, and proper control is there, which is great. So we're just going to remove the number one here, and we're just going to move it to the top. We also need to declare it as or declaration equals true, because by doing that, we can get access to all the methods coming from the runtime class. And as you see here, we can see our property here, which is great. I'm gonna put something here, something like save my image, okay? So this is the value currently only on the server. Uh, I'm gonna make a right click here, and I wanna put some code in the back end. Uh, basically what's happening here is that when I click on the button to import the image, this is going to call this method, and this method is going to serialize all the information using this method that I uh, created previously here. This is pure X++. That's why I created it, just to save time. It's going to serialize some information like the content type of the image, the file name, the base 64 version of the image, and the customer's rec ID, and it's going to serialize it in JSON, and this is what we're going to send back to JavaScript. So if the payload looks, looks correct, we're, we're, we're just going to call copper control. Um, and then we need to call send image data to control class. And then we send the payload. OK? So we're good here. Now, um, what I was telling you guys, how do we tell JavaScript to react to when this value change? For that, we're going back to the JavaScript class. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna add some code here. So what I want to do is to use um, a very special feature we have here, which is observe. Observe basically subscribes a function to changes of an observable. Basically, when a value changes in the function that we sub subscribe, JavaScript is gonna react to it and it's gonna take proper action. So the first parameter here is the name of the method that we created in the runtime class. We need to be very careful about uppercase and lowercase. And the second parameter is the function that is going to be executed once um, this value is changed from the server. So whatever happens here is going to be executed when we change the value from the server when we load the image. So what do we want to do here? I want to get the, the JSON version, the JSON payload, and I want to deserialize it into their individual components so I can load them in the JavaScript library. I'm going to define some properties here so I can save some values temporarily, like the content type, the file name, then um, the customer's rec ID, and also an instance of the JavaScript library that we're using for this demo. Okay? So what we're going to do here is if, if I change the value here, I want to deserialize this. So first of all, I'm going to check if I have a valid, a valid um, payload, which is not empty. And if that's true, I want to deserialize it. So for that, we have built-in functions like uh, uh, parse JSON right here. Parse JSON requires only our payload. And then we are ready to deserialize that information. Uh, first of all, the content type. And content type is going to be equals to the method that comes in the data contract. So for that, I'm going to my data contract class, and I'm just copying and pasting the names just to make sure that I'm putting the right values. Because remember that from here, we don't have any IntelliSense. So if you put something wrong, you're going to know it until you go to the browser and load it. So I just want to save some time. I, I just want to avoid some errors here. So farm file name, and then we have data list. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have cost rec ID equals to data list, and then the name of the data contract. Again, this is a regular X++ data contract, uh, nothing really specific to the extensible control. So we got the three values right here. And what else do I want to do? I want to take the 
the image from the HTML object. And for that, I'm gonna use uh, jQuery. So we just get the element by ID, our image ID is per image. And once I have this, I just gonna do image data source equals to data list and the base64 version of my image. So I got it right here. Okay, so I got, it seems that everything is done. The, the next thing that I need to do is just to load the open source JavaScript library for this demo. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. This is pretty specific, uh, but it's the same thing for any JavaScript library that you want to load. So this library requires for the image data and then some additional parameters, like the aspect ratio. Uh, whether it's summable, which is gonna be false, and if it's movable, false. All right, so we got, we have loaded the JavaScript library, um, which is gonna load the image that we loaded from the server. The next thing that I wanna do is put a new button because when I load the image, if I, if I already cropped it, I wanna send back that information by saving the contents, okay? So I'm gonna use jQuery again. This is pretty handy, as you can see. And I'm gonna do an append and I'm gonna add a button uh, in code. Again, uh, be very careful, make sure to double check your code um, before running into the browser. We don't have any intelligence here. So this is gonna be save button. Remember, this is the ID that I have in my CSS class, save button. And then an on click event. So for this, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna explain this later send image data to the 365. And then what I'm gonna do here is to put the name of the property that we define on the build class. So we're taking this from the server into the JavaScript class. For this, I'm gonna use um, $dean value. And by using data, I can access to it. So remember we put a poly name on it. The poly name was button name. I'm just gonna make sure I put it right because I don't wanna uh, make mistakes. So the poly name in the control class is actually button name. So I got it right here. I'm gonna put it here. Okay. So what happened here is that we, we took the JSON payload, uh, we deserialized it, we got the individual values, we loaded our JavaScript library for this demo, and we added a new button that once clicked is gonna perform another operation that I will explain later. And then we're also using the property that we define on the property sheet in Visual Studio coming from the server. I'm gonna do a build here, and I'm going to the browser so we can see if everything works fine so far. Uh, remember, um, there's a chat section, uh, put whatever question you may have, and I'll make sure to answer them. This is pretty uh, convoluted at first, but uh, the more you practice with it, you'll see how easy it is. And it's very flexible, actually, because you have the opportunity to create whatever comes into your mind by just using CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. So while the build finishes, I just want to make sure that I, that I type everything correctly. A minor mistake here can give you um, a nasty error in the browser, and we don't want that. So this is done, but let me just make a quick uh, recap here. Uh, part JSON, we have everything, image data, document, get element. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, so let's go back to the browser. Um, I do have a shortcut right there. It's gonna show us the customer form, and it's gonna, um, is gonna allow us to see our new button. And once we click on the new button, our new form is gonna load and it will show us our extensible control. Uh, the first time you go into the actual browser might take some time. Remember, every time you do a build, there's a cache flush. So yeah, we, we just need to be patient. Hopefully this is not gonna take too long. Um, we can do a recap in the meantime. We've done quite a few things right here. We do have our resource files. We have built our build class, our runtime class, and we have defined logic in the JavaScript class. So it reacts to changes coming from the form property whenever this one is updated in the server. So we have the customer here. Uh, we got the new button, which I named crop attachment. 
Uh, there's a little kitty that I'm using for uh, reference purposes. I'm gonna click on upload and when I click on browse, I'm gonna select an image and everything works fine. We should see the image right here. This is great. We can see our extensible control. Uh, this is the JavaScript library showing a canvas. We can resize it and we're ready to go. You can see the title that we put in Visual Studio in, in our button in the HTML object, which is great. Now for the last part, I wanna put some logic here so we can send all this information back to the to the server and then Xbox Plus will save it as an attachment in the Docker table linked to the customer. So let's go there. It's the last part. So let's go to the runtime class and I want to add something that we call form commands. What is a form command? Basically a form command is a method an X++ method that is serialized so it can be called from JavaScript and JavaScript can send parameters back to the server so we can perform an operation. So it's gonna be a private method. We're gonna call it get crop image, image data. And this is gonna receive some parameters that I wanna copy from my uh, method right here. This method right here is gonna take care of doing all the X++ processing. So I already built it is just uploading this image back into the docker table in the Trusty firefall. So this is gonna call the method that I just showed. So um, it's gonna be cropper control operations and the method is upload crop image. And upload crop image is just gonna receive the same parameters. It receives the content type, the file name, the new version of the image once cropped, and the customer's record ID, so it knows uh, which customer to use. Okay, so we need a decorator here, and the decorator is form command attribute. And it only asks for one parameter, which um, you guessed it right, is the public version of the method, how it's gonna be recognized in JavaScript. Now let's go to JavaScript, uh, this is all we need. And in the JavaScript, we're just gonna uh, create a new variable right here. Uh, I found in the, on the web that if you wanna handle, if you wanna handle um, if event clicks outside of the main function, which is the proper control, we just need to define it like this. So I'm just gonna create it right here. I'm just gonna name it, and this is gonna call our method, okay? So this method is gonna be a new function that is gonna be executed once we click on the button. And this will do a few things. First of all, we're gonna get the new version of the image by calling the JavaScript library. Again, this is very specific to the JavaScript library. You need to worry about this. And then we're gonna grab all the parameters that we uh, saved temporarily earlier, remember? Uh, this is pretty important. The parameters needs to match how we call them in the form command. So we, uh, so we avoid any errors here. So we got content type, we have um, file name, if not mistaken. We got new image data, which is our new image data that we uh, declared earlier. And then we have rec ID. Rec ID is our customer rec ID that came from the payload. Now, how are we gonna call this form command? We use what um, we call um, the Lord Dean call function. Call function is a method that allow us to call any form command that we have defined in the runtime class. And it requires three parameters. First, the name of the method, how we define it on the control on the on the runtime class. And this is gonna be get crop image right here. The second parameter is the instance of the JavaScript class, and the third parameter are all the parameters that we just defined earlier. So What's gonna happen is that when you click on the button, this is gonna call send image data to the 365. This is gonna get the new version of the image once we have cropped it. We're gonna get all the variables using the same names of the variables in the foreign command. And we're just gonna use call function so we can call that method, send all the parameters back to the server and the server will do the trick. Uh, again, let's take a quick look at the uh, lowercase and uppercase just to make sure we have everything right. We don't wanna, we don't wanna you know, waste extra time. Uh, content type, file name, new image data, and rec ID. All right, so after doing the double checking on, on the variables, remember this is very important. We're gonna do our last build um, just to make sure that everything is gonna be uh, synchronized and deployed. So 
Hopefully this is not gonna take too long. Um, right now we are pretty much closing the demo. If everything works fine, we'll be able to load an image uh, and send them back to the server. So it's gonna be saved as an attachment in the Docker table um, from the server, from X++. So what we have done so far is pretty much uh, adding the resources, uh, creating the a build, a build property couple form property methods and, and the form command. So we're done here. Um, I'm going back to the browser. I'm gonna refresh it here so we can flush the cache. Remember that um, there's, a, there's a, a chat section where you can put all your questions uh, during this demo. I know it's a lot of information. Uh, it, it might be confusing at first, but um, just put your questions there. I'll, I'll do my best to answer them uh, appropriately. So. Again, whenever we do a build, um, there's there's the cache being flushed. So this might take time. Um, <clears throat> we'll just wait for it. And again, um, you see there's a lot of steps involved in this process, but once you get the hang of it, uh, you'll see it's pretty fun. It's pretty, it's pretty great, the things what we can do. And honestly, for the ones that have worked on previous version of Dynamics AX, this is the natural replacement of the managed host control. So we got the form here. We're going to click on crop attachment. We got our little kitty and we're going to replace it for another image in here. It's going to be our dynamic home logo. Um, but I want to crop just this word right here. If everything works fine, when I click on save my image, I'm going to see a success info log message right here. Crop image is successfully added, meaning it was already um, processed by the server. We're going back here. We're going to see one attachment. If I click here, we'll see the crop version of the image we got here, uh, which is pretty great. And all the information that we sent back from the JavaScript, like the name of the file, the file type, and, and the full name, everything linked to the customer. So this pretty much uh, concludes uh, our demonstration against, uh, uh, well, against d 365 FO. Thanks for joining. Uh, I hope you liked it. And remember, there's a chat section uh, for you to put all the questions you may have uh, are gonna be pretty soon in, in the live QA so, so I can answer them. Thanks again to the Dynamics.com uh, community for giving me this opportunity. And, and thank you, have a nice day, bye. So I just want to say that um, thanks for joining. I hope you found it useful and you can actually use it to leverage even more the things that, that we can do in D365 FO. I know for a fact that sensible controls might be a little bit tricky at the beginning, but uh, you'll get the hang of it and you'll see how impressive it is when you're actually building your own tools. So um, yeah, so um, coming up with some comments that I saw in the chat, um, I saw something interesting someone was saying um, that he would like to know what is possible to do with extensible controls. So extensible controls really, um, as far as I've seen, there are no limitations in the sense that it's pretty much um, function that features that you can create using HTML5, JavaScript, um, and, and, and also CSS. So think about what you can do with those tools in a browser and really, I don't think there's any limitation. I think the limitation that you might that you might find will be around the browser, but that will be something that you need to deal with the clients. Uh, make sure to use the latest version of the browsers, and and you'll be able to use whatever you can do with HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. So I will encourage you guys to keep uh, playing around with sensible controls. Um, I will say that if you have um, some curiosity about it, there's, um, there, there's, um, there's a form in the AOT that you can take a look at. It is called tutorial underscore uh, chart control form. And, and basically that, that does a lot of pretty neat things. Um, um, you can see it's a really extensive JavaScript file. It, it does a lot of things that I didn't have the time to show or demonstrate, but just do what I do. Uh, usually when there's not a lot of documentation on the web, you can just go into the AOT, take a look at those classes, look at the chart control JavaScript files. You can find it on the on the package local directory and, and, and you, you'll learn a lot more things. Um, some other things that I wanted to talk about in this session is 
um, people were wondering if, they, if we can use data sources in the JavaScript view model. Because, you know, in the demo, I only presented what we can do by binding, um, I want to say, string values, right? Like the values that, that I define in the property sheet in Visual Studio. But you can actually use, uh, you can actually use data sources. And whenever, whenever you do a build, all the, all the data sources or all the controls that you define in the actual form in the IoT are actually get translated to the JavaScript view model. And we just need to know how to call them. In this case, if you want to take a look at the, all the data sources from the JavaScript view model, uh, you just need to use the keyword data. Data pretty much gives you access to all those things. So by, by calling data.data source, you get the list of data sources coming from the form in the JavaScript view model. So from there, you can, you can just use a built-in function name, get model collection. And get model collection basically takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the data source that you want to get access to. And the second parameter is the list of the data sources, which, as I mentioned earlier, you can just get them by calling data.data source. Once you call get model collection, you will get um, the, the actual data source in some sort of an, in, in, in an array, basically. And you can and you can just iterate through each of the records. And one of the one of the great things about getting a data source in the JavaScript view model is that you can do a loop, for example, and depending on the type of number of records you have there, you can modify the the document object model of the HTML in runtime, which is pretty great. So basically, uh, you can you can pretty much have a really rough HTML control with no with no details or, or elements. And you can actually build it in the in the client side on the JavaScript just by just by leveraging the the DOM from the JavaScript. And then you can also uh, do some other stuff like um, adding or removing elements. So so it's pretty great. And and that's that comes to my next uh, comment on this topic. Um, some people might be wondering is it better to modify the HTML within the HTML control or from the JavaScript view model. If you look at the documentation on Microsoft, uh, you can look it up as extensible controls. Microsoft has a really nice documentation that gives you the, the pretty basis about it. You can modify the HTML um, using what we call the Microsoft Dynamics HTML binding syntax. It, give you, it gives you a lot of keywords that you can use uh, to modify the elements within the HTML file. Like you can remove or add text boxes, uh, check boxes, you can put data on it. But you can also do the same thing from the JavaScript view model. So my recommendation is that it depends on the needs. I've seen some examples where people uh, is really doing a lot of changes within the HTML control. Um, leveraging the, the Microsoft Dynamics binding syntax, as I mentioned previously. But if I got to be honest with you, most of the examples that I've seen coming from the Microsoft predefined extensible controls, um, they are actually doing everything in the JavaScript view model. Because I think in the end, it gives you uh, a lot more diversity of what things you can do. And they, they do a lot of the HTML visualization logic in the JavaScript view model. And when you open the HTML control that related to it, it's really nothing. It's pretty much empty, just defining the main div control, which is pretty important, as you saw in the demo. But other than that, I will go ahead and just do everything in the JavaScript view model. Uh, that will take care of that comment. Then also, you might be wondering how do we, I mean, would it be possible to debug an extensible control? So an extensible control can be debugged by using um, the regular debugger that we have in the IoT, but that will only work for the, for the build class, for the runtime class, or if you want to put some breakpoints within the form, if you want to see if all the values are being passed correctly. But if you want to debug the actual client side of the business, then uh, you you may know this already, but um, I might I might will, well I, I would like to say it anyway. You can use the developer tools in your preferred browser. Uh, if it's either Google Chrome or um, Internet Explorer or Edge, you can leverage the developer controls. As soon as you load the form that contains your extensible control, uh, you can see in the depending on on what kind of developer tools you are using, but 
most of them shows you a folder with all, with all the JavaScript folder, with all the JavaScript files that you have available. So just look for the one you created, open it, put a breakpoint on it, and then you can see all the logic you, you built in the IoT right in the browser. And, it, and it's, really, it's, re, it's really neat because sometimes when you are coding JavaScript files in Visual Studio um, using extensible controls, you know you don't have IntelliSense. So it's very easy to make a mistake. Uh, maybe you can put you put a lowercase when you need a upper case or something like that. So it's very easy to, to get an error and, and and it will be and it will be hard if you don't use the, the the debugger in the browser to find out what's going on. So I will say just go ahead and, and you know do a do a combination of of the JavaScript view model. Uh, running on the browser, put some breakpoints, uh, and that will help you to overcome any issues that you may find. Uh, other than that, I will say, if by any means you forgot to create any property in the in the runtime class, and by some reason you want to put properties that are meant to be used only at the client level, you can actually define properties on the JavaScript view model. You can just create a function and that function will be accessible only by the, by, by the JavaScript model itself and the HTML control. So that's another option you have. I mean, for the demo, I didn't see any specific need for having a property only at the client level, but you might see some usages in the future, you know? As someone else was saying, um, anything can be done with extensible controls. I will just go ahead and, and you know, uh, think about what else you can do uh, personally, while working at client projects, I haven't had a chance yet to really deliver an extensible control, but, but I've seen some pretty unique requirements from the client. And sometimes you might think, oh no, this is not possible. Or maybe you tell the client, hey, you know what, we can actually have some work around for this as an alternative because this may be complex or this may not be supported in the current version of D365. Well, now I can tell you, um, th think about it twice instead of you know go ahead and tell the client this is not possible because um always remember that we have extensible controls and again with extensible controls i don't want to sound repetitive but really the power of html5 css3 and javascript opens a, a, a really new source of opportunities for you to deliver that unique experience to the client so i always say uh, go ahead play with it get familiarized. Um, I'll, I'll make sure to put um, my content on, on GitHub as someone was suggesting. I think I put in the chat uh, my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I will try to paste it one more time just in case you want to connect to me if you want to get the repository. And if you have any other questions, just reach out. I'll be more than glad to assist you. I just want to say uh, thank you to the uh, Dynamics Con community for giving me this opportunity. This is my first session ever, and I hope to come back next time if possible. And also, thank you, thank you everyone for uh, for attending. And uh, I just can, I just can um, thank you again for for being here. And uh, have a nice rest of the day.